What is up guys, this is Fenton here. Now this is a really common tutorial uh, motion tracking. You can find it pretty much anywhere, but I'm going to do it because people have requested it. So if they don't know, I'm sort of going to put it in my own sort of terms and words or whatever. But first of all, what you need is a clip that you need to motion track. So I've just got this one from an old montage, which is it. So we'll all motion track this. First of all, what we need to do is get a, um, a video. Uh, we need the same sort of video in a picture sequence and a video. And I'll just show you how to do this. You just shove it, go into After Effects or something. And if you have quick time, that'd be good. You can just go to Google and just download quick time. Really easy. Doesn't take a lot. <coughs> So we'll just wait for that to open up. Jesus. Yeah, this was actually going to be used in the My Virus 2, but Arctic Empire has now actually ended, so um Right, so say we have this, I think this will probably do. Yeah, this one what you do is if you you know, obviously you got your clip, you'd cut it all out and because this one's perfectly cut out already I've already done this what you do is you go to composition, pre-render hit the output module go to H.264 you'll only get that with quick time um, if you go to format options and you don't want to know your settings um, you don't know settings go to profile high levels 5.1 um, bitrate settings, the bitrate encoding is CBR and the bitrate MBPS is 8 and then the multiplexer just MP4 and standard. I don't think you really need to do that. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Don't really need audio. So we'll just, you just click OK and then render. And then once you've done that, don't do anything else. Keep exactly the same. Because I'm not going to render it out because I've already got it. Unless I would only render it out if I started moving this around and cutting it a bit more. But because, you know, this is all I need. I don't need to render it out again because I've already got the video. But now we need to make a picture sequence, which, again, just go to composition pre-render delete this one um, then you go to PNG sequence I use PNG you can use JPEG but PNG you know it it's better quality so it'll be able to track it better and then what you want to do you don't want to move the adjust the names because these stars will be the frame numbers so if I just go on desktop and I just like make a picture of uh, a folder saying pics I'll just go in there and just click save the hash signs will be the amount of frames so if I just quickly go into that now while that's rendering you can see all the little individual frames that's why I want you wanted to put it into a folder because there could be well let's, let's see how many frames there are it's 265 frames so there'll be 265 pictures and this always takes a little bit longer um, so I we'll just have to wait for that to be done and then we would have our pictures and our video. This is a lengthy bit and it does get a bit annoying, but if you want to make something good, you're going to have to spend time on it. You're not going to get a good thing done within 10 minutes. Oh dear, I've got a phone call. I'll, I'll just pause this and then come back when it's back on. Sorry about this. <coughs> Hello guys, I'm back again. Sorry about that. <coughs> oh jeez. But it's just rendered out, so uh, we don't need to come in this no more. So don't save. <coughs> and we'll open up Boozhoo. Good program, Boozhoo. And really, what, the picture sequence is going to be for, be for Boozhoo, and the video is going to be for Cinema 4D. So this is going to act as a ba our background, and this is going to be our motion track and help pictures, you know, to make the, um, oh Jesus, sorry, to make the, um, I can't remember what it's called, the motion track, shall I say, okay, pictures, you go into the picture folder, and you just hit the first one, and then click open, and that will automatically open the next sequence. Now first of all, what you want to do is you want to render both of these out in the same 
Okay, that's 59 frames per second, and that would have been 59 frames per second as well. Um, you need to keep them both the same, wise. it will go fucked up. So what you want to do is you want to go to the frame rate, hit 59.94, because that's what ours was rendered in. Click Apply. Click No. And then you want to go and do it again, 59 Apply. It just resets back to 30 for some reason, or 29. You just want to go back, <coughs> apply it, and then it's all good. And then close it. Hello, little bicycles. And then you just want to track features. Start. And then that will go. It won't take that long. It'll take about mm, two minutes. I don't know. Depends how big your motion track file will be. Oh, bicycles, you're wet. Jesus. No, no. You can stay here. Jeez. This bloody cat's coming in. He's wet. And he's jumping all over my bed. <sighs> Little fucker. Hey, go away. Jesus. <laughs> um, I don't. Just another thing. I don't know how I got Buju. I just got it off a video on YouTube. So I don't actually know where I got it from. Just, you know. Just in case anybody's wondering where to get it from, I don't actually know, I'm afraid. I'm tired. Fuck it out. Oh. Okay, it's near enough done. Pretty much. When it wants to hurry up. <coughs> Alright, yo. Once that's done, you are then come into camera solve. Come to about halfway. Camera solve. Optimize camera path to move this. Check that and then just click start again. This will be really quick. It won't be as long as um tracking features <coughs> usually it does it like really quick it just like skips it all but it do there we go that's better right here then we've got our yellow and blue dots on our motion track which is pretty nice and you can tell it's all all right, there's nothing wrong with it. Just wanna to come to about halfway to I'm uh, just trying to think where's a good place to do it. Here it is, it's a good place to do it. As you can see, these three points well, I'll do the, these three points. As you can see, that's like a T. And that was perfect for an X and Y axis. Because they're pretty much ninety degrees up. Um, so we've got. A, a, it's best to follow the lines on the the ground. That's what I've pretty much done. So that one and that one are sort of the same. And then this one is sort of similar to this one. So that's why I've clicked that as it goes along this. So first of all, what we do is click off. You want to go scene geometry, and you want to do x axis first. So you want to go x axis, and then what you want to do is select this one and this one. X-axis is like left to right. Oh, I'm gonna, oh I was holding caps caps lock, my bad. Alright, um, I want to hold control and check the other one then we've got two. So we've got these two selected for X-axis which is along here. Connect and delete. Add coordinate from here again, Z-axis or Z. Um, let me just check the middle one and come up to this one. There we go, and then we'll connect and delete. And the Z axis is along here. We don't need to use the Y axis, just the X and Y, just because we need to get the floor. Using the the Y axis, it means lifting off the floor, and we don't need that. So, and then you just want to add in, and then origin. We'll just check this one, just be in the middle of all of them. Connect, and you just click this a few times. And if you just go add test object, as you can see, this object is motion tracked. It is on a bit of a rotation, but I'm just going to leave it at that because 
I'll show you how to fix it in Cinema 4D. So just delete that and we'll go to export camera, browse, just go to desktop, keep it like that and go to C4D, save. And you want to go to 100, scale scene by 100 and save it. Um, I'll just come out of that now and I'll go into Cinema 4D. Oh, I feel like shit. Oh. Right here, now we've got this opened. Keep the scale at 10 when you open that project. Um, and what we want to do is we want to create a new material. And we want to go to the desktop and select the video. And QuickTime H.264 will be able to enter the material mode within Cinema 4D. I know some don't, but anyway, if you just look, this is our motion track, which looks pretty much exactly the same. So if we just create a background, add the texture on, we now have it. As you can see, the floor is not aligned. This is... Oh, fuck off. Jesus Christ, you wet fuck. Ugh. This should be straight, this line, completely straight, because that should be like a horizon type. So we just grab this, hit the rotate, and we can just rotate that so the floor looks bit more. So again, we can match it up with the, the grid on the floor. We don't need to, well, we can be we can rotate it if we want, if it makes it easier. So I've made it the blue axis align with this floor here. So, uh, wrong way. There we go, and the Oh. oh fuck off, Niall! Jesus Christ! I went everywhere. What? What is everyone? What's everyone on it? Ugh. Whatever's on him. Jesus Christ! And we're just gonna hit the blue till this line is pretty much the same. There we go. That'll do. So that is your floor. Um, the reason you do it on the top now is because it's got no keyframes on it. If you come down to like the camera, it's all set with keyframes. So you start adjusting that, it's going to fuck your motion track up basically. So we've got our floor. Everything is all good. That's just if it's slightly out of place. When it's a lot out of place, it's just a little bit difficult. And then you're just like, I don't know, you're like, oh, bollocks. You'd add your shapes or whatever. Let me just size this one down. Oh, Jesus. There we go. We can leave it there. And actually, we'll, we'll move it. Move it in a, a sort of like a gap here. So it does stay at that point, which is pretty nice. And that's how you motion track. Um, if you do want to, by any chance, want to take these grids off, um, I can't remember where you go for it, so I'm just going to quit. Oh no, here. You want to go to filter, and then, I don't know, you've got the grid. You can check that off. Um, axes. No, that's not that. I just shut that back on. Um, I'm just trying to think. I want to take yeah, the world axes. Um, I don't know how to take these points off. Hide it. Mm, you could do. I suppose you could hide that. I don't think you can actually take them off anyway. So yeah, you can just turn that off. Um, these two buttons here, just quickly run through them. Um, if you turn them red, it's basically turning off. Green means, I don't know what it means. Um, but I just use red, <coughs> which is a double click. So you can click once for the green, click once for red, and click once for normal. Now the top one is just what, as you can see. So if I hide that here, if I render it, it will still, like say, um, I'll just do it on another one, the cube. I can't see it in the viewer, but when I render it, it shows it. The second one here below it is the render one. So if I show that, but turn off the bottom one, it won't render. But if I turn off the top one and the bottom one, it's not there at all. So the bottom one is the render. So you'd have it 
normal if you want that object to be rendered. If you didn't want it rendered, you'd have it not. Uh, you'd have it off. And depending on whether you want to see it there, it's up to you. You could. It might be like a null object. You might. You might be using it for shadows, or I don't know what you might be using it for. But I'll just quickly just run that through just in case that might help you. So yeah, that's how you motion track within Buju and Cinema 4D, and you can put like animations, people running. My advice to you is if I just save this, um, you'd go into new, um, there we go, and you'll create a whole, just an animation with here, save it, and then you'd, um, come back to your motion track, and then just go to file merge, and then you just get an animation, so if I just get like a, I don't know, let's go to my animation that I'm doing now, a policeman, and you just import that in, and then all you got to do is move him in, move him in position. Um, I just group that, and I don't know where he is. He's probably really small, but yeah. And then what you can do is you can size him up, but you go to coordinate, and you can do this because, obviously, as I showed in the tutorial before, it does fuck up his thing. Um. We'll just go down to five. How about that? So he's got an animation. Obviously, he ain't got his textures on. But yeah, he will stay in that position, standing or whatever. And there's your three D animation for you. Boom, ting, all good. So yeah, guys, that's it for this tutorial. There's a few more um, that I'm gonna do. Um, I can't remember what they are now, but this is one of them which I thought I'd just do now because I'm bored and you know, I need an update in the next few days. So yeah, please look out for the tutorials after this, or maybe download packs, I think, like model downloads, they'll be out in the next few days as well, so please look at them if you see them come up in your sub box or whatever. Please like and comment on the video, and please come back soon. Peace.